You get a situation now where he's climbing in the polls, climbing, 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 and the left is now freaking out because she doesn't have anything. I mean, Donald Trump today in New York City at the Economic Club of New York, revealing, announcing his big economic plan, which includes a lot of really interesting stuff, sort of basic stuff that I think would be very, very appealing in places like Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Michigan because it includes manufacturing in a way that wouldn't devastate millions of jobs. Listen to him here. We will ensure that the United States has a giant steel industry, an aluminum industry, a manufacturing base, and a defense base. We want a industrial base that can take care of our defense needs 100%. And you can call it what you want. Some might say it's economic nationalism. I call it common sense. I call it America first. This is the policy that built this country, and this is the policy that will save our country. You know, his economic policy is good. It always was, all right? It just was. It was smarter. It was edgier. He understood how to use trade and tariffs in ways that we had not seen from previous politicians. Maybe they understood it, maybe they didn't, maybe they actually had other people pulling the strings that had no interest in the kinds of policies that might be bad for their particular businesses or their particular families, dare I say, hey, we're going to get to Hunter Biden coming up because he's, he's got some insane legal strategy that we must discuss, we must. But... The reality is Donald Trump talked about things that actually resulted in a prosperous economy. In fact, when you look at median incomes during his time in office, you actually see that they were the best they've been since, well, you gotta go all the way back to JFK in the 1950s. So we were actually starting to see some success for the middle class. We were seeing steady GDP growth. We had a stock market that was growing. We had an overall economy that was growing. I mean, you can kind of look at that March 2020 environment and the shutdown that resulted from that as as a bit of a wash, right? Because everything tanked and the economy was down 30 some odd percent, only to then be up 30 some odd percent as soon as that was over. And so he handed Joe and Kamala a pretty successful portfolio, right? Like to, to use a, a market phrase, hey, there, there it was, a pretty successful portfolio. And what did they do? They ruined it. They, they took inflation from 1.7% all the way up to upwards of nine. It was actually pretty darn stunning to see. And you know what? He knows it. Kamala knows it. These are the numbers that were just put out by the Trump campaign. Take a look, guys. 2.77%. That was the mortgage rate back when Trump was there. Now you're looking at 7.75%. Personal savings, now this, this number's a little tweaked, right? Because there was all the stimmy money that everybody had, which I was actually really concerned about, rightly so. Rightly so, why? Because what's it gonna do? It's gonna lead to inflation eventually. Well, Kamala and Biden, they didn't care about that. In fact, as soon as they got into office, they had to have their stimmy too, right? And not only did they have the stimmy, checks. But they then put forward the biggest stimulus package we've ever seen, and they called it the Inflation Reduction Act. And what did it do? It caused inflation to jump like that. Gasoline now 51% higher, eggs 47% higher, car insurance 54% higher. I mean, how do people do it, right? Because wages, let's go back to that other chart for a second. Wages, real wages are down nearly 4% when they were up 8.2% under Donald Trump. So his policy, it actually worked. It actually worked. And people say, oh, you know, he's protectionist and all these tariffs are going to lead to additional inflation problems. And there's actually a school of economic thought that actually says it's possible in the very, very sort of initial stage, but long term, it actually reduces inflation. And this is the theory that he's really sticking to. Again, let's go back to Donald Trump today, moments ago, at the Economic Club of New York. Smart tariffs will not create inflation. They will combat inflation. 
I had almost no inflation, and I had the highest tariffs that anyone's seen, and they were going a lot higher. Foreign nations will pay us hundreds of billions of dollars reducing the deficit and driving inflation down. It'll largely reduce our deficit. In my first term, we imposed historic tariffs with no effect on consumer prices or inflation. The anti-tariff people, many of them, I believe, honestly work for these other countries in some form, get tremendous amounts of lobbying money and other money because it doesn't make sense what they're saying. But we had no inflation and we had protection and I saved so many industries. I saved the steel industry. But Biden and Harris are letting it go. They're letting it go. It's so easy to keep. A combination of fair trade tax cuts, regulatory cuts, and energy abundance will allow us to produce more goods, better and cheaper, right here in the USA than we've ever done before. Wow. So, again, a, a pretty detailed plan there. Pretty serious, straightforward. You, you saw it. And look, I think bottom line, the proof is in the pudding, right? People are like, wait a second, the last three years have been quite miserable. Just look at the economic misery index, right? They'd be quite miserable for people. And they compare and contrast to what was. And I think there's some nostalgia there. As far as inflation goes, you know, I, I totally agree with that. It's one of the reasons why I do say you've got to be diversified. Part of the diversification should include some allocation to gold. And when you take a look at gold, I recommend you call my friends over at American Heart for Gold. TrishLovesGold.com is the URL. You can get up to $15,000 right now in free silver when you buy gold from them. If if you text Trish, my name T R I S H, to 65532, 1844-495-1115, give them a call. They'll happily talk you through it. Um, and again, use my name so that you can get that $15,000 worth of free silver, up to, I should say, because I think it depends on how much gold you're actually buying.